what you're looking at here is the banner logo for my website so if I bring up my website you see up here in the left hand corner I've got this image which is a logo that says Dan's courses and um, and I've used it on also my YouTube site also also I have a separate image over here on the right hand side for your midterm project I would like you to create a logo for my site that will go in the upper left hand corner that I could use instead of this one so I've opened it in Photoshop and for this assignment for this midterm project there's got to be some rules okay rule number one it has to be the right size okay so for this midterm project the image has to be the right size so let's look at the size image size width 368 pixels height 80 pixels okay resolution is 72 and resolution and width and height doesn't matter basically it, the exact pixel dimensions need to be 368 by 80 okay so that's the first thing right so it's gonna have to be 368 by 80 so if you were gonna do this the first thing you would do is you'd say file new and say the background let's say the backgrounds white for now and you could say 368 by 80 right and 72 resolution that's fine but of course once again it doesn't matter it needs to be 368 by 80 pixels notice there's a difference between pixels versus inches here right a big difference right since so you're gonna set both of these to pixels 368 by 80 okay you click OK and you've got a new image and it should look this big alright and also it should say when it's 100 percent zoomed in it'll be about this big okay next rule on my logo and on my site you can see I have this uh, background area that is a dark gray and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to in to design this logo image area so that it somehow integrates with this dark gray background color notice how this character this little robot character um, is over the overlapping the gray background notice how the text goes into the gray background so this is a leader kind of like leading you into this background color scheme notice how there's gray coming around the top back area and then there's gray below my hand here so I would like you to also integrate this dark gray into the image background area what I don't want is just a box of image that does not integrate at all with the gray theme so you've got to figure out how to go to transparency how to make it blend into the gray area okay so in Photoshop what you're gonna to want to do is you're going to want to basically um, make sure you have a gray background so let's take a quick look at this gray background area I'm going to get my eyedropper and I'm gonna eyedropper over the over the gray and let's see if you can see this here um, I'm gonna pull this up here a little bit and I'll stretch this down all right so when I eyedropper it over the gray the foreground color chip right here went to gray right and I can go here to color and you see there's the foreground color chip right well I'm gonna click on it on the foreground color chip and open up the color picker and I'm gonna say okay the color of gray that we're talking about here and I'm gonna use the um, there's two ways of getting it you've got the RGB the red green and blue values of 51 51 and 51 notice when they're even 50 50 50 if, if each red green and blue are 50 then you're going to get a gray right anytime you have even numbers across all three colors also this is the hexadecimal color number for a uh, the web color right and the first two numbers stand for red the second two numbers stand for green and the last two numbers stand for blue and this is hexadecimal meaning these values can go all the way up to F so if you go all the way up here to F F F F F right you get what color you get white right see the little 
color chip in there. Notice how when I click in here, the colors change here, right? The color picker. Okay. Now, watch when I go to gray, they're all the same. 141, 141, 141, right? And then in the hexadecimal chart, 8D, 8D, 8D. So what was it? It was, I think, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, right? That was the color. 51, 51, 51, or 3, 3, 3, 3. Click OK, right? Now what you can do is, on your image, you can set that same thing. So you'll go in, click on the color, put in the right numbers here, click OK, and then get your paint bucket tool, right? Paint bucket's underneath the gradient tool. So you have to hold down the tool, hold down the left mouse button, get to the paint bucket tool, and click here. And now your background layer will be a dark gray. So if you do that, you'll be starting with the right background color for this project. Okay, looking back at my logo, here's the Photoshop document, and you can see here that I've got a bunch of layers. Let's take a look at the layers. I've got this character all by himself on, uh, on one layer. He's been erased to transparency around him. You can see, we'll turn off all the layers and we'll just add them one by one. You can see there he is, so it's transparent around him. Then I've got another character here, right? Then there's the other character here. These are all on separate layers, so I can move them around and uh, drag them with the Move tool and place them where I wanted them. I've got the text on its own layer here, right? The text has a layer effect, right? You can see the effects layer. Outer glow, it has an outer glow and a stroke. I turned off the outer glow and I left the stroke effect layer. Then I've got um, this gray, which I used to integrate into the background. And then I put this image on a separate layer here. So essentially, I've got one, two, three, four, five layers of images. And I have a layer where the text is on, right? And there's the text. Here's this, right? Notice how it integrates that way and then I've got the different characters all on separate layers. Okay, so for this assignment, this is what I would like. I would like, we're calling this the Website Banner Logo Image Project. The size of the project is 368 wide, 80 pixels tall. The background color, dark gray, hexadecimal color is 333333, or RGB values 511151. The logo must blend or incorporate into the gray background, okay? The logo must have text, dance courses, or dancecourses.com, okay? Either one is fine, all right? Um, I'm just going to save that really quickly, all right? And then the text must be large enough to be readable and must visually work with Verdana, which is used on most of the website. So if you look on my site, you see here that Dance Courses is extremely legible. We can read it. Um, we don't have to squint to see what it is. And the font basically works with the font on the rest of the site. Uh, possibly, possibly not. I'm definitely not that happy with it. Um, OK, what else? The final project has to have at least three or more separate images photographs, whatever, on separate layers, at least three or more images. That's not including the text. The logo must reflect the subject matter of the site. So this logo that you're going to create for me, I need it to be um, about computers or about computer learning, or you know, it can even be a little bit about photography, but computers has to be in there. Okay, not just, can't just be photography because my site's not just for photographers, it's a computer learning site. Um, the images you used must either not be copyrighted images, so you either have to use your own images, or they ha you have to alter the images enough, enough so that the copyright no longer applies. In other words, if you're cutting and pasting or uh, copying and pasting and erasing and, and then changing um, the colors, then you know uh, eventually the copyright no longer applies. Nobody's going to know that you know, you used a copyrighted image. So you really have to, but it has to be altered significantly, 
okay, for you to be able to get away with that. Um, it's a little bit touchy-feely, but in reality it's a little touchy-feely. In the end, you need at least one adjustment layer. I want you to have at least one adjustment layer. Okay. Uh, okay, on mine, I don't have an adjustment layer per se on my project. So what if I wanted to do one? Well, I've put an adjustment layer up here at the top, right? And if I was to, let's say, click on it and adjust the brightness, let's say, and adjust the contrast, right? One of the problems is, let's just make it a lot darker, for instance. Um, make it a lot darker. Now, the gray is no longer going to match the background of my website because it's now too dark, right? So how would you how would you correct for that? Well, what you could do is on your layers, you could take the brightness contrast layer to the layer that you want to affect. So let's say I just want to affect this layer right here, um, or no, let's say I just want to affect this character right here. Well, I'll take this adjustment layer down to right above where the character is, right? So the character is right here, the adjustment layer is right above it, and then what you can do is you can hold down your, um, let's see here, Alt key, hold down your Alt key on your keyboard and put your cursor right in between the two layers and then click, and then you'll see this little arrow going down, and now what that means is that that adjustment layer is only going to affect the layer directly underneath it, right? Only. So it won't affect, let's say, uh, another layer.